This week, it's another Journey to 4.0 special, where we jump farther ahead and take a look at work scheduled to make its Persistent Universe debut in the upcoming 4.x branch of release. And this week, we're proud to bring Star Citizen art director Ian Leyland back to share with us a first look inside the buildings of Star Citizen's landing zones. So Bill's Interiors, it's something we've always wanted to do, you know, because of, um, you know, we've had cities in the game for a while. We have many cities, we have many buildings, therefore we could have many interiors. It's a perfect opportunity to put in a lot of play space. Now, with the players flying around these buildings, they've been largely urban landscapes, um, fairly uninteractable. You know, we've done a few uh, landing pads to uh, get the players in and out there, but really the, the real good stuff was on the inside. So up until now, we've been on the outside wondering about the inside. And today we're going to talk about the inside, looking outside. Uh, all right, so we're building interiors. Uh, the way in which we approach the uh, concept development, now this was just a pure uh, blue sky ideation phase, uh, and the idea was to create uh, inspirational material uh, uh, to use that as a content to inspire, to inspire conversations, to find out what do we want to do for the game, what is cool for the game, and, and use that as the initial springboard for the conversation. So what we'll be looking through here is a, a presentation of uh, blue sky ideation, um, primarily used as a, a springboard to start conversations with Chris, with the design director and the game director to understand uh, what do we want to put in the game? What could be cool for the game? And we use that as that initial inspiration point. So when we're talking about building interiors, how could we start to break that down? So. Uh, right off the bat on the top, it's the rooftop spaces. So these would be the primary access points for the player. Then just below that, uh, the maintenance uh, spaces, these could be industrial or technical. Uh, also, we can have residential. So residential could be entire building blocks, so it could be a proportion. Then after that, we've got commercial. So these could be uh, shopping, it could be offices, it could be social. And then at the bottom, obviously, we've got lobbies. Now, these also could be access points for the player. For example, if you're inside Area 18, the player can get access to it there. And then lastly, we've got the underground. Now, these could be interesting as a connector space between buildings. So maybe you've gone in through one building, you go down, and it could bring you through to another part of a building. Let's start with rooftops. Now, up until now, we've largely designed our cityscapes um, to be more of a, a backdrop to the landing zone. Um, we have the social space generally in the middle and then the cityscape goes around it. And they've been designed to give the best composition, to be interesting to fly around, but we've not really thought about designing these uh, buildings from the inside out. So what we're looking at here is some potential concepts for what could be interesting landing spaces that drives the architecture of the building. With landing pads, it doesn't necessarily mean, need to be on the top of the building. It could be, you know, halfway down or, or lower. So imagine, you know, you're in the lower parts of the city and then we'd open up these additional play spaces. And as you can see here, it's not just the landing pad, it's the gameplay space that goes along with it too. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be a single building. Imagine there is a uh, network hub that services a few different buildings. So what we're looking at here is maybe like a, a transit hub where the player could land, get on some transit, and then that would lead to some buildings. Okay, so maintenance spaces. Uh, so these could be really interesting in terms of player interaction. You know, they could be dealing with the, the power or the maintenance of the building. And then also you could have technical spaces. So these would be more for technicians. It could deal with the data or the communications. And what we're looking at here is potential some uh, you know, gameplay puzzles where the player has to uh, work their way inside the main uh, operation booth. So moving on to residential. So uh, there's a huge amount of p uh, potential here. What we wanted to do with residential is two things. One, explore 
um, investigating the potential player housing. So with that, we want to be able to create a variety of interior layouts. And also we want to explore a variety of architectural styles. So when we're looking at uh, potential uh, housing layouts, we wanted something fairly modular in a way in which we could create a variety of combinations. So whether it's living spaces or habitation spaces or social spaces. And also here we're looking at, we want the place to eventually be able to populate the uh, player owned habitation. So you see here like a first indication of how, you know, the sort of dressing styles that you'd be able to do. Outside of something that's fairly utilitarian, we also want to do something that could be fairly high end. So here we're just exploring some ideas about what a space could feel like on a different architectural style and more generous windows, you know, uh, interior spaces dedicated to more than just uh, uh, habitation. And these would be focused on other landing zones. So imagine you come across these in Area 18 or it could be when we come to Terra. And also, like I said, it could be informing uh, future player-owned habitation architectural sets. Now, outside of the living quarters, there's also the social spaces just outside. And we want these to be more than just the corridors that we're seeing in the game right now. So these could be multi-layered uh, social spaces. And these could also inform uh, advanced traversal routes for the player to be able to uh, get inside uh, these habitation rooms. So as we're talking through various uh, architectural styles, what you're seeing here is just a, a collection of ideas uh, a collection of architectural intent to create like a, a palette or a mood um, that will inform art style and uh, gameplay opportunities. So outside of residential, we're moving into the commercial area. So what this means is it means we can look at areas that are more gameplay focused uh, outside of player habitation. So when we're talking about these, these could be office blocks, these could be corporate owned. Um, inside here, there could be corporate wings, there could be manufacturing, there could be office spaces. And what we try to think about with these, it's more than just a flat room. There should be advanced traversal, it should be multi-tiered. So outside of the commercial offices, we've also got like restaurants and bars. So what we're looking at here is a pretty cool uh, like skyline uh, bar in Lowville. That could be fun. Uh, but also in restaurants, we uh, Chris always described the idea of really high-end restaurants in the game where you can get access to food choices that isn't an available anywhere else. So right at the foot of the building, we're going to start talking about the lobby. So as I said before, these are going to be access points to the player, but also we can do more than just uh, a standard uh, foyer that we're seeing in the game right now. So this sort of space we're seeing here is imagine there's an underground transit network and that transit station feeds a network of building uh, lobbies. So these could be uh, social spaces, these could be really good combat spaces, uh, they could have access to many restaurants or bars or facilities, and we're just showing that in a variety of art styles. So one's a fairly low end, one could be fairly high end, but the, the infrastructure is the same. So as we're exploring um, art style opportunities, this then drives where it would be appropriate. So some would be more appropriate in somewhere like Area 18, some would be more appropriate in somewhere like uh, Orison, and obviously some would be more appropriate for future landing zones like Odessa or Prime. Um, and also when we're talking about lobbies, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to describe multi-layer traversal spaces. So in these illustrations, you're seeing uh, a variety of routes to then help inform at the initial conversation with level design. Now, finally, we're going to talk about the underground. Now, this is, I think, one of the coolest spaces. So rather than just focusing on the, the uh, positive axis of the building, we're going to look at the underground. Now, what this does, it means we can access a whole area of play space that uh, doesn't need to be contained inside the building. So within the lobby, um, we want the player to start to traverse down into these spaces, and these could be underground uh, transit networks. They could be abandoned underground transit networks. This then could drive potential racing opportunities. So when we was doing this, we thought, oh, it'd be really cool. Like, 
What would it look like if there's an underground street race going on there? Also, there could be traversal opportunities. Like I said before, if the player wanted to go into one building, down and then through and then up into another building, what would that traversal network be like? Especially if we're thinking about if it's an older part of the underground of a city, maybe it's uh, less used, you know, people have built up. Um, that would uh, instantly inspire a whole bunch of traversal and uh, investigation missions there. Or maybe there's an old aqueduct or an old infrastructure underground. You know, this this could be perfect for underground street racing or uh, other racing opportunities. So in a nutshell, what we looked at is a blue sky investigation into what building interiors could be like for the game. Um, these are essentially uh, dungeon kits. You know, we want to be able to uh, work on these areas in a fairly procedural manner and we want these to be dungeon opportunities for gameplay spaces. It also will start to inform uh, the future of player-owned habitation and the type of uh, visuals or look and feels that that could be. So this ties into a, a much larger initiative. So we're seeing it a little bit now with the uh, redo of Lawville that's turning into a much bigger cityscape. And what that means is every city in the game is ready um, for these building interior spaces. Now, one thing to note is uh, the cityscapes are probably going to change a little bit. Uh, just from an initial investigation, we found our buildings are quite small. So uh, expect to see the skylines go through a period of transition, but that's cool because that means we're designing the inside of the buildings and then we'll redo the architecture to fit to that. So I think it's going to be super positive for the game. So just in case we was thinking it's all just blue sky concept, actually we're going to start full production on these spaces right at the end of this quarter. So, what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that much like the new underground facilities we showcased before, building interiors will be a new series of modular set pieces, enabling a whole host of gameplay opportunities, from trade to exploration to combat and PvP and much more. And that, much like those new UGFs, they're going into production now, and in fact, by the time this airs, we'll already have started. And that the journey to 4.0 may have Pyro at its center but it will still continue to evolve all aspects of Star Citizen and the existing persistent universe around it. Now we'll be back with more Inside Star Citizen next week, but for our Journey to 4.0, I'm Jared Huckabee, and we'll be back in about a month or so with our next big look forward. See you then.